So now as we continue our look on modern day DNA technology, we're going to sort of switch gears and look at a specific type of uh, process that's regulated and sort of controlled by things called restriction enzymes. So this is our next flowchart, which will be entitled Restriction Enzymes. Absolutely crucial, crucial things for DNA technology today. Almost every single biological lab that you will ever encounter or think of or thought of has used restriction enzymes in some way, shape, or form. Um, these are also just going to be sometimes referred to as um, a different name known as endonucleases. We're going to see what that name really means as we move forward with this flowchart. So, restriction enzymes are very, very interesting proteins. They're enzymes, so they're proteins that are actually produced by our go-to organism in uh, cell biology, produced by bacteria. So, restriction enzymes are these things produced by bacteria. The reason why bacteria use restriction enzymes is sort of as a defense mechanism meaning that restriction enzymes uh, are going to be things that protect against phages. Okay, They're very good at protecting, or sometimes very good, at protecting against phages. And do you remember what a bacteriophage was? A phage is just a bacterial virus. So again, viruses infect bacteria just like they infect us. There are specific viruses known as bacteriophages that are going to infect bacteria. Bacteria don't have an immune system. How are they going to defend themselves? Well, through evolution, they've developed things called restriction enzymes. Now, viruses, their end-all, be-all goal is to do this, and this is in any organism. They want to try to insert themselves. They want to ins literally insert and hijack themselves into bacterial DNA. Remember how we did those Hershey Chase experiments, looked at their experiments with T2 bacteriophage, and they were trying to figure out what is the material that enters the cell and governs the viral infection? We realized that it was DNA, and we now know that bacteria, specifically, are vulnerable to viruses invading them and inserting themselves and inserting their DNA into bacterial DNA. This says bacterial, B-A-C, uh, DNA. So what you're going to do is you're going to use a restriction enzyme. The restriction enzyme specifically, which we'll say is RE, is very good at doing the following. It actually cuts up foreign DNA, an incredible, incredibly great defense mechanism um, as long as the virus is not evolving faster than the bacteria. We'll get to that in bio 2 actually. So what we do is in order to combat this we use a restriction enzyme. A restriction enzyme, RE, cuts up foreign DNA and sort of gets rid of this uh, insertion that the virus tries to do. There's a constant battle between bacteria and virus. So why does this have any relevancy to you? Well, in DNA technology, what we can actually realize is that the enzymes, these restriction enzymes specifically, so we'll say the enzymes are very, very good at recognizing, so the enzymes recognize and cut, literally cut, so we'll say recognize, I'll space this out a little bit more, recognize plus, recognize plus, cut, so the enzymes recognize plus cut at what we call a restriction site. So we'll say at restriction site, which I'll just probably uh, entitle RS from this point forward. So what is a restriction site? A restriction site can be equal to a very specific, a very specific, let me rewrite that, short DNA sequence. I'll give us. I'll, I'll show you an example in just a second of a restriction site. So it's a short, specific DNA sequence um, that a restriction site um, happen, happens to be on, and what's going to cut at the restriction site? A restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme cuts at restriction site. Cuts at a specific short DNA sequence. Now, what happens is the enzyme that's doing this cutting actually cuts both strands. Cuts both strands at the restriction site. Remember, DNA is a double helix, so it's going to cut a short DNA sequence at this restriction site, but it's actually going to cut both strands simultaneously. Now, the bacterial DNA itself, you might think, well, if there are restriction enzymes in bacteria and viruses infect them and bacteria give these restriction enzymes a run to cut out the foreign DNA, what prevents a restriction enzyme 
from cutting its own bacterial DNA? How does it not make a mistake? How does it not just go out and cut a bacterial DNA piece instead of a viral DNA? Well, the bacterial DNA actually has this incredible mechanism of protecting itself. So a bacterial DNA protects itself, so we'll say itself, with uh, a process that we actually have covered known as methylation. Remember gene regulation and methylation? You add those methyl groups. If you add methyl groups, the methylation of the A's and T's at a, let's say, specific restriction site, the restriction enzyme sees those methyl groups and says, whoa, this is, this is bacterial DNA. I'm not going to cut this. I'm going to find something that's not methylated. And I'm going to cut that because that is the viral DNA that's not methylated. So this is a very fancy evolutionary mechanism to prevent bacterial DNA from cutting up its own DNA. So it just has this label, this methyl group on its A's and T's at that restriction site, at this DNA sequence that says, hey, don't cut over here. This is you. This is us. We are working together here. Go over there and cut the viral DNA. So that's just the basic idea behind bacteria. Now, what we have to understand is a specific example that your notes cover, which is a classic, classic restriction enzyme called Hindi 3. So it's usually labeled and written out like this, but it's pronounced not Hind 3. It's actually pronounced Hin D3. Okay, that's how you say it. So Hindi 3. Let's see what it does. Hindi 3, as a restriction enzyme, this is a specific restriction enzyme found in bacteria, cuts at a very specific point. We're going to actually do the cutting process. So I'm going to show you exactly where it cuts. I'm going to draw a 5' prime end of DNA, and I'm going to draw the exact er or area, exact sequence that it cuts at every single time. It is at A, A, G, C, T, T. Okay, that's the sequence, that's one strand. So now you should be able to give me the, the complementary strand right now. So I'll do that myself. Three prime. Now what do we have here? T, T, C, G, A, A. And I close this with a five prime because it's anti-parallel and complementary. Notice one thing. These two strands are actually a palindrome. Do you guys know what a palindrome is? It reads the same forwards and backwards. A, A, G, C, T, T, okay, that's forwards, let's say 5 prime to 3 prime, let's go the other way, A, A, G, C, T, T, very cool, this is a palindrome. Restriction enzymes love palindromes, they love cutting at palindromes, and so what they're going to actually do is cut right over here, they're going to, we're going to take this area, this DNA sequence, this short DNA sequence, which is our restriction site, so we'll call this our R, S right over here, and we're actually going to cut it with Hindi 3, so we'll say cut, with Hindi 3. And Hindi 3 is going to come in and specifically cut, and I'll change the color here so that it's very clear, like this. It's going to cut right over here, and it's going to cut the same exact spot right over here as well. Okay, So that's where we're cutting right now. We're going to cut this part and push it to the side, push that to the side, push that to the side, and push that to the side. So now, what does this result in? I'll go back to red now. This is going to actually result in the following sort of looking thing. We're going to have a 5 prime end, and then we're going to have an A, but now I have to draw some blanks, because this is actually where we had the cutting. So we're actually going to draw 1, 2, 3, let's say dots for right now. 1, 2, 3, 4 dots actually. So we're going to draw 4 dots to represent that this is where a cut happened, and then we're going to draw the rest of the sequence, A, G, C, because it's still there. It's just floating around now. It's separated from where it started. A, G, C, T, T, we'll draw, and we'll close it out with the 3 prime, which is still there. Let's do the opposite. The opposite is very simple, and it's the same exact concept. We have a 5 prime, okay, so I'm going to go backwards, A, but I had a cut here. Look at the cut right over here, this blue line. So now I'm going to do the same thing, four dots. One, two, three, four, okay? You should be seeing something. There's a bit of matching up happening. And now I'm going to draw the exact same palindromic sequence. A, T, T, um, oops, did that wrong. A, G, C, T and close it out with a T. Okay, and now we're at the three prime. So, bit confusing. It looks a little weird. What we're going to state now and sort of work off of is the fact that this structure has what we know as and referred to as sticky ends. That is the scientific term 
for this part right here, this is a sticky end, and this is a sticky end, and this is a sticky end, and this is a sticky end. Any place at which you don't see a complementary base pair or another base pair, you see a dot, that's a sticky end. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. These sticky ends are going to be simply known as regions of unpaired bases, okay? Regions of unpaired bases with complementary single strand ends of other DNA molecule, okay, of other DNA molecules cut with same R E. So that's a bit wordy. Let's see what this means. Now over here I just want to write down one thing. If we draw a dot right over here, that dot is going to represent an unpaired nucleotide. It's basically an empty spot. Um, it's a sticky end um, sort of sequence that we're going to be able to see from there. That's an unpaired nucleotide. What does this help us do? We're going to take these sticky ends we're going to utilize their stickiness and sort of cut and paste. And we're going to do that cutting and pasting in the next part two video on restriction enzymes. So let take a minute to let this sink in. Understand that we have this specific cutting at a short DNA sequence, cutting both strands. So we cut both strands just like this. And now we have these sticky ends. We're going to utilize these regions of unpaired bases and sort of cut and paste in our next video.